Good morning, Victory Life Church and all you wonderful people tuning in again. We find ourselves today again on our third lesson on the light has come and it has. We have covered, uh, you can go back to the last couple of weeks, we've been covering some, some wonderful scriptures out of Isaiah where it talks about the, uh, uh, what the prophet Isaiah saw, the light that... Uh, to be in the new covenant that we have based on better promises and uh, we do have that we have the great light the bible says um very clearly it says do not neglect this great salvation and i think neglecting is is not understanding it clearly and so i want to go back into the gospel of john where it it, it reveals jesus when he came on this planet what happened and we're going to look at several scriptures um, again, I don't want to spend too much time recapping, but we need to just go back. The Bible says uh, in, in John chapter 1, for example, it says, And the light uh, shone into the darkness, and the darkness uh, never overpowered it. And so I, as we turn on all these lights here in my studio today, you know, there wasn't a struggle between the light and the darkness. The light came on, boom, darkness flee. And that's what it's saying. Jesus came on the scene. Jesus is the everything. He's the only way, the truth, and the life. He came on the scene, and he came uh, with, you know, obviously he came to die for our sins, and he did. He came to have a broken, his body broken, and it was for our healing and for our redemption. And so praise God for everything that Jesus did. But along with Jesus, he came with a part of heaven, if I can put it that way. He came full of the light and the life that the Gospel of John brings out. I want to read uh, some testimonies because, as I said, the light, uh, the darkness never has overpowered it, cannot put it out, has not appropriated the, uh, the light, and was unreceptive to it. So a lot of people, you know, obviously are rejecting the light as we are going to see in further some of the scriptures that I'm going to cover. But I want to tell you, in this dispensation, at this time, not just in the Old Testament, there's been so many great uh, testimonies of uh, believers. For example, um, this came out of the newspapers of, uh, of uh, overseas. And it says that uh, now the enemies were shooting missiles into Israel. It says their God changes the course of our missiles. Even the enemy noticed that God was on our side and still has power today. The glory that, that uh, the darkness could not put out. And also there was uh, overseas, there were sandstorms that protected the, the uh, children of Israel or the soldiers uh, from the radical ISIS group. So praise God. Where did that come from? That's not a coincidence. That's God's power overcoming the darkness. There's lions that came out of nowhere to protect the innocent that were going to be attacked by the, the evil ones. The ones that are doing evil. I mean, that praise God for them to be saved. And I want to share a testimony that happened. I saw it on YouTube of a lady that, uh, um, again, she was a believer and she was being robbed by two men. And all of a sudden you could see her uh, speak the word or praise God. You can't tell by the video itself. But also one of the robbers, uh, one was still on his bike, but the other one was pinned to the ground by the Holy Ghost. So the, the power uh, of, of light overcame the darkness. And I'm going to tell you something, that is available for every believer at all times, 24-7. We're just not aware of it. This is why I'm sharing it with passion. Light overcomes the darkness. Jesus overcame the darkness. Jesus brought the light to us. And as it says here in John chapter 12, we want to continue. Sorry, John chapter 1 verse 12. But as to many as received him, welcome him, he gave the authority and the power and the privilege to become the children of God. That is to those who believe on and adhere and trust and rely on his name. So praise God. That's what we did. As many as believe them, Jesus, they receive the gospel. What does the word salvation mean? Healing, safety, soundness, deliverance, and security. I remember sharing that. It, 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 it was like revelation to some of the people in our congregation. We've never heard that before. And they've been in church for years. All, we, all I did is broke down the word salvation. That's what it meant. And so as to many as re, believe, 
they they are welcomed into the family of God. They can have the authority, the power, the privilege that I share. What is the authority? Well, we take authority in the name of Jesus. He left us that name as part of uh, the the gospel. The name of Jesus was given to us. And it talks about if you didn't drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt you. We will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So with Jesus, this glorious deliverance from sin, this new we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. We're going to come into some wonderful scriptures here. He gave us power and authority to push back the darkness in our stand here on this planet. Now let's keep on going here. It says in verse 13, those who, uh, it, it says, those who owe their birth neither to blood nor to the will of the flesh. Another translation says this here. It says, um, not to the blood of parents or to a sexual desire. Um, not to the blood or from the impulse of the flesh. So in other words, we are born of God. This new life comes from all that call on the name of God. Nothing to do with what tribe you're from or what family you're born into in the natural. It is everything to do with you making Jesus Christ the Lord of your life that this glorious gospel came into. Hey, it's the best best plan of salvation. He redeemed us. He bought us back. Um, it is a wonderful plan. It says, and the word Christ became flesh and dwelt among us, tabernacled or fixed his tent or flesh. So we know Jesus was walking amongst us and he had what it says here in this verse. He lived a while among us and we actually saw his glory. His honor, His majesty, such glory as the only begotten Son of God would receive from the Father, full of grace, love, loving, kindness, and truth. Now, I want to go into this word glory a little bit. And then now, the glory of God that, that they saw on Jesus. Yes, there was a, a time when He was on the Mount of Transfiguration and He literally glowed. <laughs> he was, His face shone. He was revealed to Peter, James, and John, the three that he pulled up on the mountain. And so that is wonderful. That is great. And that they saw his glory and they were just like, whoa, they, were, they saw him for who he really was. But I'm going to tell you what, most of the time, even though this was in Jesus, Jesus himself did not glow as he walked down the street. In fact, John the Baptist said it very clearly. He says, he didn't know who Jesus was until the, the dove, which he saw in the vision, descended upon him. And then he could see that who Jesus really was. Now, I don't believe uh, he said it says he received him in the vision. So Jesus looked just as simple as all of us. But still, uh, just like you and me, the fullness of the Godhead dwells in us. Well, Jesus was full of the God, fully God, full of everything that made him God, and uh, yet he was clothed in flesh. So he wasn't walking down the street glowing. He was there, but still the anointing and the glory was on him. And so whenever it was obviously needed, the power came out of him and the glory. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not, uh, not only did, like he says, we saw the glory. Yes, they did. They saw it on the Mount of Transfiguration, but they saw it through all the miracles that he did. The honor. Let me tell, show you what the word glory means. It means heavier weight in the Old Testament. It was used in everyday speech to express the worth of a person. I'm building up to something here. The importance, the greatness, the honor, the splendor, and the power of Jesus. That's uh, what was all in the word glory. He is worth his weight in gold I put down and in uh, I'm still reading some definitions here it's very important here uh, the glory also in Latin means fame or renown the splendor the holiness the majesty of God in association with a person experiencing God's presence and we know in Colossians chapter two, uh, sorry not Colossians in, uh, uh, second Chronicles chapter 5 it talks clearly about God's presence filling the temple. And so wherever God was, and, and I, I know this happens in the New Testament too. We've had the glory cloud at Victory Life Church. We've had that at a ladies meeting. We've 
we we know of a speaker that was in the hotel room and the glory cloud filled as they praised and had praise and worship tapes on the glory cloud cloud filled the sandman hotel of all places and so we know praise and worship brings in the glory the manifest heavy weight of god's presence and so it filled it in the old testament with it is god himself filling the place and in the new testament too we got to get to expect that glory filling the place and so that uh, when we worship god we can expect the glory and the presence to fill what the buildings that we are in and we do you can you can sense his presence not always and uh, very rarely do we see in the spirit realm uh, and again what's well, not something we ask for but if the lord opens our eyes we see the glory cloud but we can sense his presence and we got to expect uh, that every time we praise and worship and as we worship we will feel his uh, and sometimes we don't feel but we still believe his presence is there and so I want to encourage you on that. But here's what's, what I want to bring you to. This is so important. Not only did Jesus have this importance, greatness, honor, splendor, but in John chapter 17, it's very clear that, uh, how many are in the body of Christ? Eh, my hand goes up. So he says this here. He says, so that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they may also be one, so that the world may believe and be convinced that you have sent me. And it says, I have given them my, the glory, the glory and the honor which you have given me. So I'm going to trust Jesus' word that he wanted that. Not only, folks, we're not just sinners saved by grace. This is so important in John chapter 1. He said, number one, he had the glory. That's what glory means, the heavy weight or the importance, the greatness, and the honor and the splendor of, of the person carrying the glory, which is Jesus. But then he turns around in John chapter 17 and he says, I give you that same glory. And it's like, you know, I always say it would have been nice just to sit on a little bench before the throne of God and give him all glory and honor. And I don't ever want to lose that respect. But then he said, come up higher. He says we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's what it's talking about. The glory, yes, on Jesus, but also on the rest of the body of Christ. He was not ashamed to call us his brethren. And that's part of the gospel. You know, so many Christians that I know, they it's like ordering a steak dinner. But all you eat, it nibble around the edges, maybe a bit of the garnishings, maybe a bit of the leafy stuff. But you don't get into the steak of the gospel that he redeemed us. In fact, I wrote this down here. God wants what he has paid for. The, the precious blood of Jesus was shed to buy you back. Oh, I want to show you a scripture That'll back that up here in, in just a page over. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world, the world, all sinners, everybody, that he gave his only begotten, a unique son, so that whosoever believes in, trusts, clings, and relies on him should not perish and come to destruction, perish and come to destruction, but have eternal, everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world in order to judge. No, to reject or to condemn or pass sentence on the world. All of us were guilty and came short of the glory. So all of us, if we come short of the glory, he corrected what was in the way for us to get back, as John 17 says, to the place of glory that he wanted on the body of Christ. That dignity, that honor. Who am I? Not me in the natural, but because of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for you and me. Don't just sit back and say, I'm unworthy. Throw that song away. He came to make you worthy. He sent, even sent his only unique son so that he could make you worthy again. Put honor on you again. It was on Jesus. He never lost the honor. Except for when he died on the cross, he took all sins upon him. He took such a, he paid such a heavy price. You were not cheap. 
You were bought with a great price. Watch what it goes on to say here. It says, so the world, uh, uh, he didn't come to uh, judge the world, but that the world might find salvation, be made safe and sound through him. What is salvation? I already said healing, safety, soundness, deliverance, and security. He who believes on him, who claims to trust and relies on him, is not judged. He who trusts in, in him never comes up for judgment. For him there is no rejection, no condemnation. He incurs no damnation. But he who does not believe is judged already. Because he who does not believe on and trust on the name of the only Son of God, he is condemned for refusing or uh, uh, to let and trust rest on Jesus' name. The basis of the judgment is dictated to him um, um, by the test by, the, by which men are judged. The ground for the sentence lies in this here. This is what I want to get to. That the light is come. That's the message that we have today. Into the world and people have loved the darkness rather than and more than the light for the works of the deeds of darkness that is in them. And so we don't want to reject the light. We want everything that's in the light for us. And so John testified about this great light coming. John testified, we saw his glory. We saw his honor, his majesty, the glory of the only begotten Son of God. Well, he's the firstborn of many brethren. And then the Father poured that out on us through what Jesus did. Lifted up the body the body of Christ. That's what we are. That's who the church is. Into heavenly dignity. Into this wonderful state of being. Oh, I can only tell you, people don't reject the, that we are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's all in this chapter. Yes, many old people, Testament people, would love. I heard one man say, he said, oh, we're going to, when we're in heaven, we're going to ask you know, Moses, how it was with the Red Sea and, and, you know, David, how it was to fight the lion. But they're going to turn around and say, wait a minute. What was it like to have the fullness of the Godhead dwell bodily in you? What was it like to be filled with the Holy Ghost and power? What was it like? They, they never had that experience. Even when you see the gospel writers, they were not born again. Yet, the way, that's why the Bible says John was the least of all. The evil or the least in the body of Christ was greater than John the Baptist. How is that possible? Because he was not born again. And so when he got born again, uh, when, when we get born again, we become part takers. This is in this chapter. We are part takers of this wonderful life that Jesus came to get bring us. Oh, what a wonderful gospel. What a don't reject this glorious gospel. Don't turn it aside. And remember, when you look in the mirror, you say, oh, I'm just a nobody. But Jesus made you a somebody. You in yourself could not save you. But Jesus saved you and brought you back into this kingly dignity as uh, he is king of kings and lord of lords. He gave you authority and power to use his name on this planet. He gave you victory over the enemy through what Jesus did on the cross. Nothing that you have done. So we're never tooting our own horn here. It's all about Jesus. But we're not rejecting the work of the cross and just saying, oh, I'm a sinner. Just, a, oh, just give me a little, you know, corner. Uh, uh, what's that song? It says, uh, just want a mansion in a corner of glory land. You know what? That's not what Jesus wants. Jesus said, I'm going to go prepare a place. He's got mansions up there. He's got great stuff for you. You're a king. Maybe there's a place where there's a lake and a, up there and maybe little cabins. I don't know. But but don't have that mindset of you're just a worm. In fact, the Bible talks about Jesus becoming a worm. You know, you, there's songs about you being a worm. There's songs of, of defeat. So many songs out there. It just wants, you know, you just want to go, oh, no, 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 no. It's rejecting the work of the cross. The work of the cross. Jesus took all your sins and watch, we're not finished here yet. So Jesus is testifying about all these wonderful things that, G uh, that uh, uh, John is testifying of what Jesus did. Not, not Jesus. Jesus laid it all down for us here. So John says it's available to everybody that wants it, uh, but to as many as received it. 
uh, not by natural birth, but you get it. And, and it showed that Jesus came. He is walking amongst us, powerful. Now he says, you're going to do the works that I did, and even greater works. And we can't do that based on our own power. We've got to understand, have the revelation of what happened on our, on our insides. God in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. He is the one doing the works through us. We're just the vessels. So John testified about him and cried out, this is he of whom I said that he's coming after me. So uh, the next verse, watch this here. For out of his fullness, his abundance, we all received. I want, you need to have it. See, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 talks about the promises there that were given. All these promises that pertain to life and godliness were given. Everything. We've got to bring the promises, speak them out of our mouth, bring them into our heart, speak them out of our mouth, and use what has been given to us. It is for our godliness. It's not just for, you know, my name is Jimmy, what can he give me? But watch this verse here. So out of his fullness, out of his abundance, we all receive. Is there any lack in the body of Christ? Shouldn't be. Is there any despair in the body of Christ? No, not in Jesus. For all have a share. We have a share. All had a share and we are, were all supplied with one grace after another. So it's telling you not just a simple grace. Get an Amplified Bible. Not just one. It says grace after grace. And what is grace? It's God's full supply. It's God's full mercy. Surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And I dwell, dwell. I will dwell. Where are you going to dwell? That's one of the secrets. Remember, I shared on Sunday too, we're walking in love. And that keeps, Jesus walked in love. That's why he was totally a success. He walked in the light. What is light? If you can picture this big bubble where we walk in love, if we stay there, we're in that protective zone. And, and the enemy just can't get us. Oh, he's going to try. Oh, he tried with Jesus. But even like the Apostle Paul says, these momentary afflictions, and he had the victory over them all. <laughs> Praise God. And so I'm going to read this verse again. For out of his fullness is abundance we all receive. All had a share. And we were all supplied with one grace after another and spiritual blessings upon spiritual blessings and even favor upon favor and gifts heaped upon gifts. I, excuse me, I don't know where we get off sometimes and oh, it's hard to be a believer. It's hard to be a sinner. The way a transgressor is hard. If we understand the fullness of the gospel, walking as he is in the light and the glory that he poured onto the whole body. It came from the head and went all the way down the body of Christ. And then look at that, the blessings and the gifts and all these things, the full abundant supply. There, it's just, all I'm saying is in the, the Bible says, do not neglect so great a salvation. It goes on and on. And I like what it says in verse, uh, the next verse it says, and I'm going to conclude with this here. It says, it says, no man has ever seen God at any time, the only unique son, the only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father. Now think about that. Everybody that came and has no revelation knowledge of how great salvation is, of what I shared with you today, only scratching the surface, will tell you something else. But Jesus came and says, um, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I came to give you life the way God has it. And life more abundantly so you can see when you look at this chapter it's far more than just getting saved and going to heaven right now we can walk in the power in the in, in the way Jesus walked and uh, that's what he actually wanted from us and I just oh I could just give you testimony after testimony of men of God today that are walking like that that are walking in this power and seeing miracles and signs and wonders and they're just being amply supplied by the spirit of god but time doesn't allow me to do that today if you have any questions concerning your salvation call us at 250-862-3044 we'd love to pray with you share the good gospel with you and uh, remember uh, uh, to uh, again tune in on sunday uh, and uh, be a part of be a part of a church a body and bring your supply god bless you and have an amazing day